first. Here are the highlights of this one. Well, it was uh, kind of back and forth, and Lafayette kind of took control of the game. They're going to get the football down inside the 11-yard line here. That play was reviewed. It was set to be down at the 12, fourth down and three. I thought Fordham was a little bit kind of conservative with some of their calls here. That resulted in a field goal, and then really it was Jamar Curtis. I mean, he's the difference. This is a huge run. That ball got the ball down inside the 20-yard line, a little fade route to Elijah Stewart. That's been a positive all year long. Lafayette took the lead. 7-3 as they ring the bell. And this, this was a gorgeous call by T.J. DiMuzio. A play Lafayette gets run three or four times. They feel comfortable with it. Double reverse pass back to the guy who originally had the football. Mark Short, and then I didn't you know, agree with this. I'll just call it a touchdown on fourth down as they uh, reviewed it twice on third and on fourth down. Lafayette took that 14-3 lead. But again, you can't count out for them. They are so good in the passing game. Montez, M.J. Wright, Cody, uh, they're just such a really good football team here. Lafayette, again, played bend but don't break. Throw it in front of us, but you're not going to get the ball over the top. And you look at, the, again, just some excellent play here. C.G. Montes was incredible with his legs today. He ran for over 50 yards, but this is the play that broke their back, Harry. The 73-yard run by uh, um, Jamar Curtis here gets him over 170 yards. That was just huge. He fumbles the ball, but it goes out of bounds. And then Lafayette converted in the red zone. We talked about it on inside the huddle. Touchdowns, not field goals. They had to settle one time for a field goal. That was, and this was the best drive Fordham had all day long. They worked the ball down the field. Again, good job by Montez getting out of the pocket, dumping it off to Lofren. That and he missed the extra point, which was huge. And then this play, fourth down and a half a yard. And you just can't bring down Curtis. He's too low to the ground. He seals the victory for the Lafayette Leopards here at Fisher Stadium. Well, Marco's at work for next week. Megan's at work for this week with head coach John Troxel. Thanks, Gary. Well, coach, an emotional yeah. moment for you and your team. You told your team how proud you are of them. You told me before yeah. the game how badly you wanted this for them. Could you just express some of the emotions well, that are going through you? Well, first, AT. We got one of our own in the hospital. We are missing him today. We love you, AT. So it's hard, you know, you lose one of your guys. He's battling. These guys can't say enough. Jamar Curtis continued to battle for you. How was he huge for your team today? Well, I mean, you get a guy like him, he, he, he closes out games for you. You run the ball. I mean, what can you say about him? I mean, just great player. So, you know, we got to regroup now again. You know, like last week was tough for these guys. Now we got, you know, we got to we got to move forward. We got to get ready for Lehigh because that one's never easy. You know, so you know we can't dwell. Just like. We couldn't let the highs get too high or the lows get too low. We got to be ready next week. Coach, how hard was that decision to make on, on fourth down? Easy. <laughs> I mean, I just felt, you know, put it in the hands of our guy, 22. You know, our old line has been good all year. I felt if we gave him the ball back, they're so explosive. You know, they went down the field twice and scored. So they wanted to make sure that we ended the game the right way and with the ball in our hands. Go enjoy it with your team. I'm going to go talk to now Appreciate Jamar, it. coach. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Jamar, your coach just had so many high praises for you. First and foremost, for you to be able to come back today after not being with your team last week and, and come back and win. How important was that? It was very important. I mean, this is a win or go home situation for real. We needed this win. So I was going to do everything in my power to come back and play. The team did a great job and we won the game. Coach was talking to me pregame about just how much fun this locker room is also having, that everyone is hyped up with meaningful football in November. Could you take us a little bit deeper into the locker room? I mean, yeah, it's an exciting thing to win. Uh, this program is usually used to losing, but I feel like we created a bond and we changed the culture. We set a different standard here, and now it's a, it's a great culture and everybody's excited. Jamar, what's the culture? What's the standard? The standard is winning, winning football, as you can see. And we're here to uh, win a championship, not just now, but in the future, too. Thank you. Thank you. Gary and Mike. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Megan. Let me sum this up with a couple of numbers for you. Uh, Jamar now at 1,166 yards, passes Joe McCourt for rushing yards in a single season. He moves into ninth spot. The win today, Lafayette's eighth win for the first time since 2009. 
four Patriot League victories for the first time since 2013. Program win number 699. They will take on Lehigh with eight wins for the first time since 81 and snap a two-game losing streak against Fordham. That's all they did today, Michael. A little bit, a little yeah. bit right there. It's so much fun. I'm telling you, Gary, these are you, you want important football in November. We're getting it. We haven't had it the last couple of years. And Jamar, yeah, what can you say? He said it better than anyone. You can see the emotion John Troxell had for obviously AT and Tang Tang, the rest of the team. These guys love each other. And that's the difference today. Believe, play for each other, play for the guy on the left and your right. And you know what? It's so emotional. I, you know, the last time Lafayette's done a lot of these things, it's been a while. But they got a chance a chance to close this out next week. And how fitting would it be for Lafayette's 700th win to come at Lehigh next week for the Patriot League Championship? Well, I know we would enjoy that. <laughs> a 700. A little bit. Victory. Hey, you saw Dean DeNovo there. Let's give him some shout-outs. Yep. 16 for 21, 137 yards, 76% of his throws today were completed. He did have that one touchdown uh, today. So a great job again by Dean DeNovo. But again, a big pat on the back to that offensive line, a big pat on the back to the defense that pretty much stymied a very good offensive team for about two and a half quarters before they let them do much of anything. And then when they needed big plays, they got them. And uh, just, you know, last week I said it was complimentary football the wrong way. You could almost yes. put blame on offense, defense, special teams. Today, complimentary football the right way. Well, you said it too, Gary. What did they do last week? They were minus three in turnover margin. Today, they didn't turn the football mm -hmm. over. They played well. They did everything well. They covered things on kickoff and punt return. Really nice job by Lafayette, and it's a solid. If you want to write solid after it, it's a solid win for John Troxell and this entire staff. Mike and I might go up to Goodman Stadium right after this game <laughs> just to get ready for next Saturday. Please join us next Saturday. Mike and I will have it along with our certainly our post-game crew who are coming right up. Lafayette Lehigh, 12 o'clock next Saturday afternoon at Goodman. Megan, it's all yours. Take it over. Well, thanks, Gary. I mean, Phil and John, Gary was just saying him and Mike are going to go post up at, at the stadium over at Lehigh the whole entire week. I think we have to meet you guys there. I'll bring, <laughs> I'll bring some s'mores. I don't know. We'll have a, we'll have a ball. <laughs> well, whatever it takes, it, indeed. Let's go off of that. I mean, starting with Jamar Curtis. You oh can't not mention him in the second half. Your, your reaction so, right there. So you know what? I don't expect us to do the gyrations, but I'm going to take my Harry Douglas and say, that boy bad. Oh! <laughs> um, you know, we talked about it at halftime. He at any time has that ability to bounce that, bounce that out and, and make, a big, you know, make a big run, and that's exactly what he did. Mm -hmm. What does he bring to this team? Oh, my God, electricity. Absolutely. Yeah. Every time he touches the football, and uh, you saw the difference. And, uh, you know, to mention his name with some of the – greats we've had in the past today he passed joe mccourt for a single season total but uh he's young he's only a sophomore it's a little scary but uh you know i i, I had a chance on the field uh one defensive play in particular number 26 was in a position uh to sprint across the back of the defense and make a play and he couldn't get there and marco olivas has been an absolute stalwart for this defense and He's hurting. There's no question yeah. about it. Uh, when I saw that one play, and yet he's out there, and I think that underscores what the character and the personality of this team has become. We all wondered their first little taste of adversity last week, how yeah. they would bounce back, and they bounced back in a big way. Yeah. And he is hurting. I spoke with Coach pregame about him, and he still said he's not 100%, but he said Marco is a warrior. Yeah. He's going to do anything that this team needs. Yeah, I think, you know, you saw it there in the fourth quarter when he actually went over there to the to the Offense. offensive huddle, yeah. you know, to get these guys going. And that's, again, you know, uh, that's what a championship caliber type team does. And those are the little things that you got to do to get your teammates up uh, to, to be able to win those close games meaningful football in November. Yeah. It has been quite some time since Lafayette has been able to play that. Coach said the locker room is feeling it. You could feel it post game as well. How much more anticipation does that bring with this upcoming Saturday? Well, I, I can tell you this. <laughs> you now, forgive me, but there's a little piece of me mm -hmm. that is still happy that the title's on the line 
when we're going to Bethlehem okay. because this is That's anticipation fair. on steroids. Yeah. There are going to be a lot of Holy Cross people rooting for the brown and white next. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's going to be circle the wagons. It's us against the world. We need that win mm -hmm. uh, to take home the championship. And that's something this team has been aiming at uh, since September 10th. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, and again, you just got to keep, make sure the, that you're up for this game. You know, you can't let down. Uh, you know, that's going to be a big momentum type of game, you know, for us. You know, Megan, earlier on I talked about uh, attrition and tape. Yes. And uh, we're, we've been battling the attrition issue. Uh, not just with that. You heard Coach Troxel get a little emotional with DT in the in the hospital and, and, and watching from there. And that's how close, you know, a team mm -hmm. reflects the personality of its coach and its leadership. Marco Olivas, yeah. you know, he, he's, he's not at 100%, but he's out there. Everybody knows it, Billy Schaefer. Um, but, you know, game tape, you know, I don't know. I think we've seen maybe a glimpse of the flea flicker. That was a huge play. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when I was thinking game tape, I don't know who's seen that. Lehigh's yeah. seen it now. Oh, <laughs> yes. That's fair. That is very fair. I mean, okay, what are we most excited for this upcoming Saturday? Lots of things. But what, I mean, listen, these two are going to be on the sidelines with me, I think. We're going to yep, have yep. a triple well, duty sideline. Yeah, yeah. Up until a few minutes ago, I... It's your, it's your s'mores now. Yeah, it's my s'mores. Yeah, listen, I make a meme s'more. I make a meme s'more. I'm not going to hold you to that. You've been here before. Yeah, Tell yeah. us about it, man. What's mm -hmm. it like? Uh, it's, you know, it's indescribable. You know, yeah. it's not quite the same, you know, when they actually had to box up the statues on campus and oh, whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But it's pretty damn close, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the campus, both campuses are going to be up for it. The student bodies, you know, there's going to be partying going on all week long and leading up to that and tailgating. And there's nothing, you know, there, it's indescribable. And especially when it you know for us when it really means something and also for the lehigh guys yeah. who can play spoiler right oh they'd love no, it. They'd lo yeah, nothing they'd love better than it. to beat us at, <laughs> at in their you know and you talk in about their backyard. you talk about tailgating phil and megan uh, just a reminder i know a thing or two about tailgating uh, I, well, we'll, we'll, State. <laughs> no, I want to remind everyone go to the lafayette website there yeah. are tailgate events uh watch parties all over the country i think we've got 45 or 50 of them check uh, check the website for uh a, a city or town near you the game is coming to you they're a lot of fun you get together especially the sites where Lafayette and Lee have folks get together. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and we will be getting together next week on the campus of Lehigh. We cannot wait. Please join us next week, 12.30 p.m. kickoff time. Lafayette, Lehigh, you are not going to want to miss it. From Phil Lang, John Leon, and myself, Megan Caffrey, we will see you next week for more Lafayette football.